it's uh, February 1st, 2017. It's zero degrees Celsius, which is freezing. The freezing point for all you Fahrenheit people. There's not many dead bees on the bottom of the hive yet. But if they are dying, they may be just be clogging in the frames of the bottom box, so we'll see about that someday in the spring. And this is um, some crystallized honey that I had <clears throat> in a jar. Um, it just, it's a little bit shiny right now, but uh, it's solid honey. And uh, I just put it on some uh, parchment paper. I put it in the freezer actually, just to harden it up a little bit more. I'm going to feed it to the bees. Um, along with the sugar that I gave them. I'm going to just try to slip it in and hopefully not get stung in the face. Alright, uh, I got them a little bit uh, perturbed here. I wish I could have avoided that, but anyway, um, they look like they're doing alright. I don't see any, any bees or any sugar. Uh, on the bottom, so I don't know if they sh they're just discarding that sugar. They may be consuming some of it, and uh, I wish I could have done it without bothering them like this. But anyhow, because whenever they break cluster, for any reason, they're going to end up eating more honey. Boy, are they ever coming out! Anyhow, um, but otherwise, I think they're looking pretty good. I hope they're good. We'll find out in the spring. And uh, hopefully that honey won't just pour down the hive, <laughs> which it could because it's crystallized honey, but it could also, the heat from inside, the heat of the hive of the bees could um, liquefy the honey and then the honey could pour down the hive and it make a mess. Um, but I put it in the front of the hive, right by the front entrance. So if it does pour down, it's going to pour down the front of the hive and not down on the bees and the, the brood or anything like that. So. Hopefully I haven't done any harm. All right, it's uh, February 2nd, 2017. It's about uh, two degrees Celsius. Things are starting to melt a bit. And I, um, I used my cheap $6 stethoscope to take a listen to the hive. And I went all the way down the bottom, up and top. And at first I couldn't hear anything on top. So I went to the side and I went from, went started on the bottom. And I could hear it on the bottom. I hear the bees roaring on the bottom or just buzzing on the bottom. And as I got closer to the middle, I could hear more, and, and then, so I think they're actually, they might actually, the, the, the brood nest might be right over the whole uh, two deeps, and, um, or the top two deeps. And when I do the, uh, try to look at the, the infrared image through my FLIR 1, it just doesn't give me anything. It just says, yeah, kind of, there's heat up here, but it's, it's, where exactly the cluster is, it's hard to say. So I don't think, I think this is still giving me uh, just as accurate information as the um, <clears throat> the FLIR 1, because the FLIR 1, yeah, so what, yeah, I can see that the bees are up here, but it doesn't tell me exactly where the cluster is. Same thing here, I can tell where the, where the bees generally are, though I can't tell, say exactly where the cluster is. So it's close enough, but I think they're, anyway, judging from this, which cost $6 instead of $400 for the FLIR, uh, I think the bees are right in there, and they're, and they're coming up here for, to eat the little bit of sugar that I put in there. Anywho. Uh, this is a pollen patty, just a very small pollen patty. It's got some honey buttered on top of it. I figured that's a good attractant for the for the bees. I'm gonna stick this into my hives right now, or this one hive anyway. It's February 11th, 2017. And I got a Gmail reminder from last year around this time, or for this time, that said, think about putting pollen in the hives in February or March because the brood was very low in most of my hives in the spring. 
And even though this is a very different winter we're having this year, last year it was all snow, and this year is hardly any snow. Um, that could have played a part in it. Uh, I'm going to just play it safe and put in the pollen patty, even though it could backfire on me because there's, 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 there are several things to consider when putting in the pollen patty. And uh, one of them is <clears throat> as soon as you give them solids, which is what this is, they have to poop that out. If they're going to ingest this, they got to poop it out eventually. And um, so if we don't get any warm weather for them to poop it out, to go on cleansing flights, then there could be trouble. <clears throat> um, the other thing is once you start feeding them pollen, and if it actually kicks in, the, it, or, you know, it kick starts the queen to start laying, a month from now I'm going to have more baby bees emerging from, from the colony and they're going to be more mouths to feed and it's gradually going to be a continual cycle where I'll have to continually have to feed them and possibly feed them more and more just to keep them alive because there's more I'm producing brood and producing more more bees so that could be a problem that means I might have to stay on top of making sure they're fed but um, other than that that's it I th and, and, and I think I'm gonna go for it anyway because it's, I just have the single colony in my backyard this year or this this right now so what the hell, it shouldn't be too much work, you know, just to take care of a single colony. Um, if it produces more brood than I want, then I'm going to have a hive packed with brood in the spring, overflowing with brood, ready to explode, and instead of worrying about that, I'll probably just make a split or whatever. I can do all kinds of stuff when you got lots of bees, right? And having too many bees isn't too much trouble, because you can, if you know what to do with them, if you know how to just, you know, create nukes out of them or knock them down or do whatever you got to do, and uh, <clears throat> so it shouldn't be a problem. So, and right now, my assessment of this hive is, I think it's in pretty good shape. It seems from the thermal imaging that I've taken of this hive that most of the heat is in the top half of the hive. And there's a fair bit of heat coming out of the top half of the hive, which is this half right here. And a little bit down in the th second box. The, the, the bottom box is totally empty, as far as I can tell. And, um, so, you know, they're up there, and, and they're probably, and I see a bit of the cluster poking through the top, so they're not, not a lot of the cluster, so I don't know if they're, I think they're still fairly well clustered inside the hive where there's plenty of honey. They haven't come up for, to, eat, to, you know, to eat all the honey that's on top yet. So I think they're in good shape, and they don't really, probably don't even need this, this pollen, but I'm going to give it to them anyway. We'll see what happens. So it says, whoop, seven degrees Celsius, and I just tried to slide the, 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 the pollen in there, but uh, the bees were very active and coming right from my face. Not really bopping my face, but, you know, doing their best to discourage me. And now I've got them upset. You can see they're pouring out of the hive. So I just took the pollen patty and dumped it in upside down and, and got out of there as quick as I could. But I wish I'd, uh, yeah, see, this isn't good. Yeah, you can see they've... Uh... These are bees that are <clears throat> agitated. They came pouring out of that little hole right in the middle just because I opened up the... Uh, oh.